We argue that in the case of Hong Kong, one way of creating this differentiation is to encourage investment in photovoltaic companies at home in Hong Kong, rather than Hong Kong simply acting as an entrepot, a middleman, an intermediary that simply funnels money from China abroad and vice versa. And we show this disparity between investment and trading in figure 13 for the company of Jinko. And we see that Hong Kong has the highest number of broker dealers dealing with Jinko securities. The UK has the least number of these broker dealers. Yet when we look at the stake held by local investors, we see that UK investors have the largest share of holdings in Jinko Solar Securities as opposed to Hong Kong investors share at only 3%. While it's true that these Hong Kong investors do not carry the risks associated with these Sunrise Industries, they also do not carry the potential returns. Furthermore, expanding our vision to the whole world, Figure 21 shows the demand on a city-by-city -city basis. And what we see is that Hong Kong does not represent the largest market by any stretch of the imagination for securities like Han Energy Solar, but instead, the largest demand for these securities comes out of places like Paris, London, Chicago, San Francisco. Thus, we obviously do not see what might be considered a natural California effect from happening, but we see instead that places like New York have competitive advantage over a jurisdiction like Hong Kong, which in theory should be monopolizing this industry. If figure 21 shows this profile of investments for Han Energy Solo, then figure 12 shows this profile of investments for Jinko Solar. And we see a similar pattern, albeit with Hong Kong investors holding larger proportions of investments in this company. We nevertheless see that jurisdictions like Chicago, like London, San Francisco, they tend to monopolize investment in these solar companies, therefore exposing themselves to the potential returns from this sunrise industry. But what we would argue is that these jurisdictions not only centralize or agglomerate risks and returns, they also agglomerate competencies in investing in a sunrise industry like photovoltaic cells. Figure 24 shows the links between investment in several photovoltaic companies, their institutional investors, as well as the banks that lend to them. And what we see is that there are four large aggregators of securities in these solar companies, yet these aggregators are mostly located in the US and not in Hong Kong or even Singapore for that matter. So to some extent, these American companies have intermediated themselves right in the middle of this intermediation chain, thereby cutting out jurisdictions like Hong Kong. Moreover, the simple diversity of investment centers in the solar industry suggests that Hong Kong has a very large amount of competition on its hands. Figure 22 shows the concentration of solar asset holdings, and again you can see our paper for more information on the methodology, but what we see is that investors in places like Singapore, Chicago, Hong Kong to be sure, and places like New York tend to have larger concentrations of solar assets. That means these jurisdictions will benefit from risks and returns, but more importantly, they will develop the market knowledge needed in order to invest and grow these companies in the future. If we've already shown that some jurisdictions like Chicago have their own large intermediaries in solar finance, then we see that Hong Kong lacks its own homegrown intermediaries. Figure 23 shows the percentages of shareholdings held or managed by major custodians in Hong Kong. Thus, if we read down the list of solar companies, we cannot see the actual investors in these shares, but we can see holdings of major custodians, those companies that purchase the shares on behalf of their investors. And what we see is that there's some limited specialization of investment, 
but we do not see any one institution dominating investment in these securities. Yet, if we break down these holdings and think about it in this structured, securitized way that we talked about before, we might be able to construct portfolios that are based on the proportional holdings of these custodians. For example, we see here on the right that different financial institutions hold different proportions of different solar companies. Thus, we see that some custodians specialize to a limited extent in companies like Hanergy, Comtech, whereas in few of them specialize in companies like SolarTech. Thus, we see that there's demand for some kinds of securities, less demand for others, We've seen that securities have different risks and return profiles. It is therefore quite conceivable that one could create a bundled instrument which invests in the entire solar market and distributes finance to the industry as a whole. Figure 25 shows holdings in a hypothetical Bauhinia solar fund that Hong Kong intermediaries might put in place in order to aggregate investment and thus centralize knowledge in investing in this sunrise industry. Now, if we take holdings of these financial intermediaries, the holdings that you've already seen in the previous slide, and if we simply give shares to these institutional investors based on what they hold right now, we see that shares in this Bahinia Solar Fund would go largely to companies like Chief Securities, Shanghai Commercial Bank, Bank of East Asia, and we see that other intermediaries would have a much smaller share in this solar fund, such as Hantec Securities, Bank of China, and so forth. Thus, there is absolutely a potential market for aggregation of financial products in this market. Yet, these types of products will not come into existence on their own. There has to be a force which encourages their creation, and we argue in our paper that the financial center itself is a technology for creating an organization necessary to make these investments. And even more importantly, the law in that center is critical to providing the incentives needed for these financiers to give money to these Sunrise Industries.